I just filmed my SAG strike TV and movies, and now I can film my favorite things in November! Yeah! Hey guys, it's Laurel. You've just entered the haunted house, and now that you've entered, you can never leave. But don't say boo just yet, because today is Gratitude Central. Uh, uh. Pew, 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 pew. That's me shooting gratitude out of my fingers. You guys know every month we like to do a little monthly favorites video, but as of tonight, we are changing the name of the series. The whole reason we do the monthly favorites is because it is a way for me to show my gratitude. I make lists of things that I'm grateful for, things I've experienced, products I used, blah, blah, blah. And it always puts me in a good mood. So why the heck haven't we called this our digital gratitude journal yet? Because that's what it is. It's time for a mini rebrand, you know, to match my channel rebrand. So that means you are currently watching our monthly digital gratitude journal for the month of November, 2023. Welcome back to the channel if you guys have been here before and welcome if you're new. This is something we do every month. And this month I have a long list. So we need to get into it. But before we do, consider following me on my other socials, guys, if you haven't yet. Because if you like my content here, you might like my other content on other socials. Okay, first thing on my list, the beginning of November, literally the day after Halloween, so November 1st, I went to Chapel Roan's concert here in Austin. Guys, this artist I have been in love with for probably a year now. She is a redhead like me. She's queer, she's fun. She does drag-esque makeup and runs around and sequins little unitards and costumes. And her tour is themed so that basically it's a costume contest every time she does a concert in a different state. So everybody's dressed up. Our theme was slumber party. So I was dressed really cute. She's an incredible singer. She's a performer and an incredible singer. Her notes are so beautiful and clear. She writes music about knowing your self-worth and about being queer and about being fluid and happy and putting yourself first. Her music is so fun and beautiful. And guys, you can listen to her albums on Spotify and then see her live. And she's still out here hitting those notes like, like it's nothing. Like it's nothing, dude. Truly a religious experience. One of the best concerts I've ever been to. Everybody in the crowd was so queer and happy and the vibes were just vibing. They were so good. I went with one of my very best friends in the whole entire world, Liv. I haven't been able to see her a lot lately because when we were hanging out all the time, we were doing musical theater together. So like we were kind of always hanging out, but she's got a job, I got a job, we both work stupid hours, but we don't get to see each other as much as we used to, okay? This is my first time seeing her in months, and we had so much fun. God, she's just a breath of fresh air, one of my favorite people in the whole world. She's a great singer too, so it was great going to a concert with her and just singing along to Chapel. Also, I don't know if I say her name right. Chapel or Chapel? Let me know. <laughs> anyway, Olivia, if you're watching this, I love you. I miss you. Let's hang out soon. Okay, next thing on my list, my dad came to visit. If you guys don't know, my dad lives out of the country. I am kind of estranged from the rest of my family, so I only get to see him every once in a while. He came so that we could celebrate Thanksgiving, just the two of us, because... I don't celebrate it with my family anymore. He was in town for a few days. We went to some of my favorite food places around town. I introduced him to my K-pop boys. We did some, you know, cleaning and organizing and we took down all my Halloween decorations together, but mostly like it was just nice to be in each other's company and just like talk. I feel like I haven't been able to see him in a hot minute. He's been traveling so much and so we had Thanksgiving dinner with some turkey and some dinner rolls and some green beans and potatoes and molasses. Not actually, sorry, just thinking about over the garden wall. We watched the D&D movie together and then we ended the night with Mario Party Superstars, which I'm really good at, by the way. And I set the computers, both of them, to easy and dad and I both lost to the computers. Remember when I used to play video games for a living? What happened? I already talked about this in my SAG strike video where I talk about stuff, movies and television. So I'm going to just brush over it briefly if you guys wanna hear my whole 
everything about it, go watch that video. I've been watching Fall of the Ushers on Netflix. Such a good fucking show. Like, so good. I still haven't finished it, but it's so good. So a while back, I did a subathon on stream, and during that subathon, you guys bought me a desk treadmill. So it's not like my big industrial treadmill that I have in my workout room, but it's for using under a desk while you work. And I've been focusing on YouTube content so much, I've hardly been in this room. I edit downstairs so that I can hang out for hours on end with Isley in the living room. But it's been killing my neck and my posture to sit and look at a laptop all day. So, while my dad was in town, we purchased a standing desk to go in the living room, and we took the treadmill that you guys bought me and put it in the room as well. So I don't necessarily have to use the treadmill, but I can stand when I'm working. I got a laptop mount so that the laptop sits up higher, my posture's all straight and good. I've got like a mouse and a keyboard that are separate from the laptop. And now if I also wanna be active and not just standing, I can also walk. I swear to God, okay, when I'm walking on the treadmill and editing at the same time, it makes me edit faster. I don't know what it is, but it works. I can't tell if I like that I'm working out or that I'm editing faster more, but either way, it's a win-win. Next thing on my list is our soft rebranding. That's what I called it. Cause we're not changing our name. We're not changing our content. I guess the, the content is kind of changing, but it always does after October because I prioritize Halloween content, but it's not Halloween anymore. You know what I mean? We've got new art. My artist really came in clutch with the new profile picture, the new banners, the new panels under my Twitch. Like, everything is new and pretty. We've got some new merch coming in soon. It just feels really refreshing, and it's all bisexual colors, so. Really refreshing, really validating. <laughs> my channel has always been a place for me to, to talk about my special interests and my hyperfixations, but I never labeled it as that. And so I feel like this rebranding has kind of given me a chance to be like, that's what this is. Like I'm not putting myself in a box because I'm out here loving special interests. So why don't I just make my special interests my brand. So we've got K-pop, but we've still got the scary content. We've still got the horror. We've still got video games sometimes. We've always got the vlogs. We've still got, you know, like it's, it's just a mal malignation. Is that a word? I don't know. It's just like you blend it all up and that's me. And so I love that the, the rebranding is kind of just me cluttered, but like pretty, right? <laughs> I'm also just obsessed with my new profile picture. It makes me feel so pretty. It just feels so soft and so fierce at the same time. I don't know. Sometimes I include my favorite song of the month. And this month it was very much swayed because I saw her in concert day one of November. But my favorite song this month is Picture You by Chapel Roan. It's so beautiful. It has this old swingy vibe to it, but it's a song about yearning. And it's also sexy. <laughs> I don't know, it's just, it's a beautiful song. It gives Dolly Parton and Chapel at the same time. It's her vibe and Dolly's vibe, and it's, ugh, it's a beautiful song. I love it so much. I don't know if I've done a favorite content creator of the month before, but I am doing it this month because first and foremost, she's a content creator who honestly has really left an impression on me since day one. I'm on YouTube because I'm a fangirl. Like I, I became a YouTuber because I liked watching YouTube. She was one of the very first YouTubers I watched. Grace Helbig, if you guys don't know, um, is currently in chemotherapy for breast cancer. And I grew up watching her. She has very much inspired many different kinds of videos that I have done on my channel and many, many others. I think she is funny and awkward and dorky and weird and beautiful. And I've just always really liked her. Like truly, I grew up with her. I kind of stopped watching her content for a while just cause like, I don't know, you know, you grow out or there's like object permanence almost. Like I just kind of, stopped watching her for a hot minute there. When I found out she had breast cancer, I revisited her channel and I've been watching her chemo diary vlogs and stuff like that. And while she was one of my first favorite channels on YouTube, she's out here undergoing one of the hardest things a person can do. And she's sitting there making her husband laugh while she's in chemo and he's just giving her support. She's making him laugh and she still manages to find joy and, and stuff to make me laugh when she's undergoing such a scary, traumatic thing. God, I just have so much respect for her and I'm just fighting with her. I'm fighting for her, I'm rooting for her. I want 
only the best of outcomes for her. I have so much respect for her. I don't know, I just love her. And her vlogs have really been a light for me recently. Next thing on my list, I've been re-watching my favorite anime, Fruits Basket. The first time I watched it, I was watching it when they were releasing new episodes, so I was having to watch it like every week. And when the final episode came out, I loved it so much, and I sobbed and cried, and it shifted my life, you know? But I couldn't, I couldn't bear to watch the show over. I don't know what it was, there was just this like pit in my stomach and in my heart, I just couldn't touch it again. And so I didn't for like a year, maybe longer. I don't know how long ago the show ended, but I've started rewatching it again. I forgot how beautifully healing it is. It is such a therapeutic, cathartic show. It is so well done, even in the dub, you know, sometimes with anime dubs, the, that voice acting is kind of cringe, but it isn't for Fruits Basket, it's, it's perfect. And there's just such beautiful messages with every episode. And it's honestly cry therapy for me. Still to this day, I don't think I'll ever be able to replace my favorite anime with anything but Fruits Basket because of how much this show has meant to me and how healing it's been on my round two rewatch. I love it so much. One of the best shows I've ever seen in the entire world. Please watch it, please watch it, please watch it. Like, yes, the show is romantic, but it's really more about trauma and grief and conquering both of those. And as someone who has gone through a lot of that in my past life and now recently again, it's healing those things. It's healing my trauma and my grief. Okay, the next thing on my list you guys knew was going to be on here. I got my nails done to match. Y'all know the Stray Kids Boys released a new album this month called Rockstar. We did a whole album listen party on my Twitch channel when it went live. I've been reacting to content over here on this channel. We now have a Patreon. The Rockstar album is so good. It's so good that I like so many songs on it, I can't pick a favorite. I don't have a favorite on the album because I like them all so much, pretty much equally. But if I had to pick a favorite, it'd probably be Cover Me. Or maybe it's Blind Spot. Maybe it's complex. Actually, I can't pick a favorite. It's just a great album. <laughs> and of course, it's always gonna have a soft spot in my heart because it's the first comeback I've ever experienced with K-pop in real time, so. Uh, next thing on my list is a specific night that I spent with my friends at a bar. Our friend Atune was in town, so some of us went to one of our favorite bars and we sang karaoke. And usually, I'm not a girly pop who goes and sings a ballad during karaoke, but the night was themed at the bar. It was sad girl hours. It was a sad girl night. So they wanted you to sing sad songs. So I sang one of my favorite songs. She used to be mine. And I'm just really proud of it. Like, I was a few drinks in, y'all. I was pretty, like, I was deep in the drinks. But I kind of killed it. I kind of ate. It's true, I was attention sweet center, but I still remember that girl. It's not the most flattering angle, but... If you guys wanna see the full video of me singing it, let me know. Okay, next thing on my list, I got my fourth tattoo. Guys, it's almost the end of 2023. I got my first tattoo in January of 2023, and we are probably ending the year with four tattoos. Maybe five, probably four though. But yeah, here, here she is. The tattoo is supposed to be a set. Uh, we ended up running out of time, but there was supposed to be a sun as well. I was originally going to get it mirroring on the other arm, but now I'm like, maybe I'll get the sun somewhere else. I don't know. I've just been having lots of thoughts about it, but I love my moon. I love my moon. I am a star sign girly. I love being a cancer, Leo cusp. I love tarot. I love the moon. And I look at it, it gives me Jester vibes. It honestly gives me Hezika vibes. I just love it a lot. I love it a lot and I can't wait to get the matching sun soon. And it was an artist I very much trust. You know, a lot of my friends have gotten tattoos from her. So I hit her up and was like, hey, my friends trust you. I would love for you to work with me too. So I can't wait to get my second tattoo from her. Oh, okay. So the next thing on my list, November is Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving is usually very hard for me. But this year I was invited to a friend's family's Thanksgiving. And they actually invited a lot of people who are in town who also don't have family in town to celebrate. So it was just like a big group of my friends and then my friend's family. <laughs> but it was really sweet. It was so funny. Like literally we all brought good food 
and the food was amazing, by the way, okay? We didn't just have turkey. There was like a stew, like a beef stew. So good. Everybody had brought desserts. We were playing games. We were watching Glee. I don't know. It was a weird day, weird night, but we had so much fun. The conversation was good. And honestly, it felt good to just be a part of a Thanksgiving where I wasn't feeling really, really lonely. It was just a great time. Next thing on my list, though, is kind of silly, but... You know, the food was amazing. It was amazing, guys, but I wouldn't have been able to survive it if it wasn't for lactate. <laughs> Listen, hot bitches have stomach problems, okay? Hot bitches have IBS. Hot bitches are lactose intolerant, okay? So shout out to my friends at this party because everybody brought lactate. And we were all sitting there taking it together before we started eating. And I felt great the next day, truly. I felt so good the next day. Hello? Okay, but speaking of good food and friends, a few days later, I had a crock pot night with my friend Kristen and Destiny and their partners. We jokingly decided to do this, I think during my Halloween party when I was a little tipsy. I was like, I have a crock pot, you have a crock pot, we all have crock pots. Let's make our favorite crock pot dishes and share. Because, like, my friends know how to cook. I want to learn how to cook, okay? That's not what ended up happening. We didn't cook them together. All of us cooked our favorite dishes, showed up. We played some board games, and we ate good food and shared all of our meals. Like, Destiny made this authentic Korean dish that was wild. It was, like, chicken off the bone, like, melting off the bone. And it was, like, a stew with, like, oils and gokujang. And, like, it was, oh, it was so good, okay? And then... I made my famous turkey chili, which was fire and a hit, and thank God for lactate uh, with that as well. And then Kristen made this like beautiful cinnamon roll peach strudel crumble thing. And we played Trivial Pursuit, Jackbox, Mario Party. Screw you, Donkey Kong. It was so fun. Like honestly, what a wholesome night. Just friends being pals and sharing food. It was like a dinner party. It was like an adult. Adult dinner party. Dinner parties are adult. It was like a dinner party for gamers. <laughs> I don't know. It was a great time. And all of us are texting about how we want to do it again soon. So if you guys haven't done a crockpot night with your friends, consider it. It's like a potluck, but like with crockpot meals. And it was so fun. Last night, I streamed with you guys. And it was the first time I had streamed in a really long time because I've been working so much on the YouTube content. And I missed you guys so much, y'all. Like, I was instantly in tears after hitting live and you guys showing up in chat because like I just missed you guys so much. So to anybody that showed up, thank you so much. It was so good to see you. Um, but this is on my favorites list because we did like a real body doubling stream. If you guys don't know what body doubling is, it's something that's really helpful for neurodivergent people specifically because like sometimes we just need a person there chatting with us or not even talking to us at all so that we can get our shit done, right? So like I was editing, you guys were doing homework, some of you guys were cleaning, like we would talk a little bit in chat but then we'd keep working and it was just so relaxing. We listened to lo-fi, we shot the shit every once in a while but I wanna do this more. It was such a fun change of pace in comparison to like gaming and not being able to talk to you guys because the game's too intense or like streams where I'm just doing my makeup and talking to you guys or like our K-pop nights. Like we hadn't done something like this successfully before and I loved it so much. I can't wait for the next one. So yeah, if you weren't there, but that sounds interesting to you, make sure you go follow my Twitch channel because we'll probably do another one soon. I've been editing a lot and it kind of kept me on task. It was perfect. Second to last thing on my list is actually a quote I found on TikTok last night, but it really hit me hard and I made it my phone background. Your new life is going to cost you your old one. It's going to cost you your comfort zone and your sense of direction. It's going to cost you relationships and friends. It's going to cost you being liked and understood. It doesn't matter. The people who are meant for you are going to meet you on the other side. You're going to build a new comfort zone around the things that actually move you forward. Instead of being liked, you're going to be loved. Instead of being understood, you're going to be seen. All you're going to lose is what was built for a person you no longer are. Remaining attached to your old life is the first and final act of self-sabotage, and releasing it is what we must prepare for to truly be willing to see real change. This hit me hard because 
y'all, I talked about it kind of in the last monthly favorites video, but things have shifted for me. A lot has changed. My brain chemistry has changed. My relationships with people are different now. My interests are very different. My content is different. You know, like there's so much in my life that's changing, but I truly am so much happier here. And I was happy, you know, like a year ago, I was really, really happy. There was, there was this time between my birthday and now where I was really, really unhappy. And I'm finally out of that. But this quote last night flipped something in my brain. And as of today, I just feel better because it's right. The right people will meet me on the other side. And at the end of the day, you're not going to be for everyone. So why waste your short time on this planet trying to be someone for other people when you could just be you for you? You know, I just really needed to hear that last night. I know I said that was the second to last thing on my list, but I forgot about this. I got this in my P.O. box and I still don't know who sent it to me. Not. 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 I like it a lot. Thank you so much. And the last thing on my list I want to start doing every month because this is my digital gratitude journal and I'm so grateful for you guys because if it wasn't for you, I couldn't make this my job. So here are some of my favorite comments from the month of November. Kelly's comment came from one of my stay vlogs where I wasn't wearing makeup. And this comment just meant a lot to me because I am very insecure about my bare face. Because like, I love wearing makeup. It, it's not just to accentuate the good parts of my face, but I also feel like it's a big part of my gender identity. So it just meant the world to me that it meant something to you guys that I do show myself bare face in vlogs. So thank you, Kelly. Tacky Tacky says that they've honestly fallen in love with my channel, saying that it feels effortless and positive. Let me tell you, it's not effortless, okay? But nothing's forced at the end of the day. But there's a lot of work that goes behind the edits. But regardless, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, Tacky. I really love this comment thread from M. Dolby because they started it with, girl! And then at the end, they were like, wait, I also know that like you don't identify as a girl. I hope you know that I meant it as a genderless term. And I just thought that was really sweet because it was very validating. Like, yes, I don't identify as a girl, but y'all can call me girl anytime. Truly, I don't mind identifying words like that because, like, I call everyone girl. You know what I mean? But thank you for double-checking. I really like Charlotte's comment. She said that she's happy to witness my journey with straight kids because I make the videos fun to watch with the comments I say. I don't know. It just was very sweet. I feel like there is a lot of reaction content out there that people hate on, and I'm always nervous to be one of those cringy reactors, but I'm just out here like really enjoying what I'm doing, you know? Thank you so much, Charlotte. This comment just made me feel very validated and made me feel like I'm on the right path with my content, so thank you. I think we have a really phenomenal, cool group of people in this community. Seriously, thank you so much for all of your comments, but these ones just stuck out to me in ways that touched my soul. So thank you so, so much. I love you all. Guys, this has been my November digital gratitude journal. Thank you so, so much for watching and hanging out. I would love to hear some of the things you were grateful for this month, some of your favorite things that you did or favorite products that you used, movies, TV, etc. Let me know in the comment section below. And if you guys watch this whole video and you haven't left a like, consider doing so. Maybe hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button if you wanna get notified when I post new videos. And don't forget, if you guys like the content here, you're probably gonna like my content elsewhere. If you guys can't catch me here, you might catch me here. You know what I mean? So I'd love to see you not just here, but there. Follow me on my other socials. Check out my merch and check out my bestie shop if you guys want some cool designs. And yeah, that's it. I love making these videos. They always put me in such a good mood. I hope watching it put you in a good mood too. Thank you so much, guys. I will see you guys on the YouTubes later, skaters. Let's be grateful for life together, friends.